Hello, I'm Debbie Bell Hosking for Finextra TV here at Cybos 2023 in Toronto, and I'm chatting to Stephen Granger. Now, Stephen is with Swift, and the theme at this year's Cybos is about collaboration overcoming fragmentation. So, welcome. Debbie, thanks for having me. So, you've just heard me chat about collaboration overcoming fragmentation. What does collaboration mean to you at Swift? Well, I mean, we're at Cybos. Right, and just look, look around. Everything that's going on here, it's the industry coming together to figure out how it can drive better answers, better results, better outcomes. Um, the feedback I've had on Cybos, by the way, is that you know last year people were so happy to get back together after the pandemic. Um, but this year has really felt like people want to do business, mm. that there's an opportunity to actually really get to grips with the challenges and the opportunities that the industry is facing, that individual firms are facing. Um, and that's been a real theme that's come out. Now, you know, Swift more broadly, we are a, we're a cooperative. Everybody knows that. Um, and we're here to serve the community. We, I, I look at Swift as being a servant leader asset. You know, what we can do to help drive the community forward is dictated by the community, whether that's ISO, whether that's raising the bar on how to remove frictions from the way that transactions move across the network. In removing those frictions, we can speed payments up. You know, everybody's obsessed with speed. There is the, how do you just get the payment to the beneficiary quicker? That might be manifest through real-time payments. It might manifest through just, you know, the thing being quick. But I think the more we can speed up the removal of friction points, that's, that is where there's a lot of hard work to do. So, you know, we're, we're very much at the center of that. We love the role that we play in the industry. Um, and, and, you know, we celebrated 50 years together this year. You know, 1973, 239 banks came together to figure out how to move capital around the world more effectively. And here we can reflect on that and put the foundations in place for what happens for the next 50 years. Exactly. And we're talking about, I mean, there's this big history. We had people on the sofa earlier who've been to 20 Siwasas and, and even more. And there's this amazing experience that I suppose collectively and collaboratively is moving forward. So we're talking about now and at this year's Cybos, one word that keeps coming up is interoperability. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, sure. I mean, interoperability really is at the very heart of everything that Swift has ever been about, actually. I mean, you know, we are, we're well known for the role that we play in facilitating cross-border payments. And if you think about that simple use case, that is, how do you move money from one domestic pool of liquidity to another domestic pool of liquidity and orchestrate that transaction? That's what we've done for the last 50 years. But you know, what we see now, this trend around interoperability is there are multiple networks that exist. There are multiple new forms of value, whether we talk about CBDCs or tokenized assets or whether we think about you know, where settlement might occur in a different network. Mm -hmm. I think when you run a network of 11 and a half thousand endpoints, people increasingly want choice in terms of where that settlement is going to occur. Mm. Um, and part of our role is to really be able to facilitate that. And so we've done a lot, you know, I mentioned CBDCs and tokenized assets. We've done a lot recently in that space. We've done several experiments. You know, we've done recently one with a relatively small number of banks, about 13 banks. We've worked with Chainlink to explore how you can move tokenized assets across multiple different chains. Um, that is a use case that you know we see has value today, but has got a long way to go to get to a point of being able to bring that to life. But if we don't do this experimentation with the market, prove where there is value, do, how these things can work, how do we learn from that experimentation process, we're not going to get there. You know, it's. I think I read something the other day that said something like 97% of institutional investors expect tokenized assets or digitally native assets to play a role in the future of finance. So if that is the case, we need to understand mm. how they're gonna persist and manifest on mm. in an environment. Mm. Right. And it's unlikely to just be one, so how do we interoperate across those? I think that really allows Swift to be able to play on the core of what it, of what it has always done. Mm. Now we're talking about interoperate, you're talking about journeys, you're talking about experimentation, and of course, we're chatting about collaboration. So let's look at cross-border transactions. How can collaboration increase efficiency there? Well, it's a brilliant question because you know, for that one I can go a little bit back to the future. Um, 
You know, in 2016, we launched this thing called GPI. Yeah, and GPI was a means for banks to be able to demonstrate. The overt thing was, you know, we can track a payment. But actually, what it has really been able to do is to provide metrics into the community for the community to raise the bar in terms of how it needs to operate. So what do we see coming off the back of GPI now? Well, we can measure what's going on on the network. We can see that 50% of all payments that are initiated across the network hit the beneficiary within five minutes. You know, the network is quick. You know, we can also see that, you know, those payment instructions hit the beneficiary bank, 89% of them within an hour. I mean, you know, when people talk about what the network is and what the network isn't, the network is quick, right? And when you think about the scale and the volume that flows over the network, I might even go as far as to say that the network is relatively cheap. So, you know, it's uh, we've come a long way, but we've come a long way not because, you know, we are swift. We've come a long way because we are swift working with the community mm. and the community have brought into that messaging and that story. Mm. And that is great. And when it comes to real-time payments, um, what's their role? What's the role of real-time payments in terms of achieving G20 targets? Well, look, I, I think look, the reality is, you know, the G20 story has started its life with how do you solve problems for consumers, you know, and retail investors and SMEs. And so, you know, we've seen this, we've seen real-time payments really progress into the domestic ecosystems. You know, whether it's the UK, whether it's Singapore, whether, you know, the phenomenal success you've seen in markets like India and Brazil, that can only be a good thing in terms of a driving financial inclusion, bringing more people into this ecosystem in a way that they can actually benefit from, you know, from, from you know, speed and, and what all those things that speed brings with it. If you take a use case like remittance, right, that for many countries, actually from a foreign direct investment standpoint, the amount of the, the reliance they have on remit, inbound remittances is huge. Yeah. So, and a lot of those remittances will be blue collar remittances, right? Going to sending money back to pay, back to families. If they can access that money quickly and securely, which real-time payment platforms typically enable, that is only a good thing. Mm, okay, thank you, Stephen. And then just finally, to, on that note of positivity of good things, um, we're at Cybos 2023. Could you give us a little view of, of how it's gone, how important the theme of collaboration has been at this year's Cybos? And also, let's look ahead to what's happening next year. Okay, so look, as I said earlier, right, at the very core, the whole theme of this topic of this year's Cybos has been, you know, collaborative finance in a fragmented world. Clearly, there are, there are challenges that we are experiencing today. They're not necessarily new challenges. You know, whether, that, whether that's given rise by geopolitics or macroeconomic trends or the rise of different technologies, more than ever, finding ways to be able to create a common collaborative framework for, that, for those things to exist within an ecosystem that allows them to scale you know, um, is really important. And we've discussed that at length through Cyboss, our customers have discussed it at length with their clients, um, and it's been a it's been a great story. Now, as we think about that, next year we're going to Beijing, yeah, and I think it's a great opportunity for us to talk about, you know, the the role that Swift has on a geo in a geopolitical context, on a global standpoint of bringing communities together. So we look forward to Beijing, and I, maybe we'll see each other there as well. Well, on that note, let's see what Beijing brings. And thank you very much, Stephen. Debbie, thank you.